Hello everyone, in this video we are going to talk about agricultural implements. The first topic is tillage. So for crop production, we have to do many operations in the farm. The first operation that is done in the farm is tillage. So tillage is nothing but ploughing. So by ploughing, we are preparing the uh, farm to sow the seeds. So tillage is nothing but the mechanically preparing the soil to provide favorable conditions for the plant growth. The main objectives of this tillage is to obtain deep seed bed for crop growth and to add humus and fertility to the soil and to, and to destroy and prevent the weeds. Uh, by proper tillage, we can aerate the soil for proper growth of crops and we can increase the water absorbing capacity of the soil and we can destroy the insects and their breeding places and we can reduce the soil erosion by doing tillage. This tillage can be done in two ways that is primary tillage and secondary tillage. Primary tillage. Primary tillage is the first operation done in the field uh, which open up the land. The implements which are used for primary tillage is called as primary tillage implements. So by uh, primary tillage we will open the cultivated land to prepare a seed bed. And next one is secondary tillage. So after primary tillage, secondary tillage is done. So by secondary tillage we will provide proper til tilth to the soil. The implements that are used for secondary tillage is called as secondary tillage implements. Types of tillage. First one is minimum tillage. In minimum tillage, there will be minimum soil manipulation. Strip tillage. In strip tillage, only isolated bands of soil are tilled. So, if this is the whole land, in strip tillage, this whole land is not tilled. Only the isolated ba bands. That means, uh, the place where we are growing the crop only on in that places we will do tillage so these are left until and and this isolated bands are tilled in the strip tillage where we are growing the crop rotary tillage rotary tillage is nothing but uh, we use the rotary blades or any disc so, by the rotating action of the rotary blades, the tillage operation is done. Mulch tillage. Mulch tillage is nothing but um, we will mix the grass or any other uh, vegetation into the soil. So, it is called as mulch tillage. And the, this grass and any other mulching materials are left on that surface only in this mulch tillage. Combined tillage. If we use two tools simultaneously, then it is called as combined tillage. Primary tillage implements. So, plough is the primary tillage implements. There are different types of ploughs. The normal ploughing depth is about 15 centimeters. Contour ploughing. Contour ploughing, normal ploughing means generally uh, along the slope we will plow contour ploughing so along contour along contours if we do ploughing then it is called as contour ploughing types of ploughs indigenous plough moldboard plough disc plough chisel plough subsoiler rotary plough first one is indigenous plough this is the indigenous plough This indigenous plough is commonly used in our country and it is also called as country plough. The main parts of this indigenous plough is body, it's the whole body, share. So this is the share. This, this, uh, this share only goes into the soil and cuts the soil. The cutting element of this indigenous plough is share. Shoe. 
this part is called as shoe this shoe supports the chair beam this is the beam uh, we will place this beam on the animal so that they will operate this indigenous plow by moving handle this is the handle which is holded by the man who is plowing next one is small board plow it is a very com common implement and the functions of this small board plow is cutting the furrow slice lifting the soil turning the furrow slice and pulverizing the soil components of mb plow share so this part is called as share so this part goes into the soil and cuts the soil mold board this is the mold board so this part turns and leaves the furrow slice land side this is called as land side so uh, it is a flat plate which uh, bears against and transmits the for, uh, transmits the soil to one side that means it creates a furrow wall it makes a clear furrow wall frog frog is a part uh, to which other components of this plow bottom are arranged plow bottom is nothing but the small board share land side this whole thing is called as plow bottom which goes into the soil and does the does the work tail piece tail piece an, is an uh, adjustable extension so when we need the when we need this we will use the tail piece it is an adjustable extension only share this part is share components of the parts of share share point this is the share point which goes into the soil and makes the furrow slice this this forward end of this cutting edge is called as share point cutting edge this whole part is called as cutting edge this is the front edge which makes the horizontal cut in the soil wing of share this is the wing of share so it is the outer end of this cutting edge gunnel gunnel is the vertical face at the end of this share and it uh, it takes the side thrust and supports the plow bottom to hold plow bottom cleavage edge so here it is the cleavage edge so uh, it uh, it joins the mold board and share on the frog so mold board and share is connected to the frog by this cleavage edge wing bearing so it is a level portion of this wing of share and this share is made up of chilled cast iron or steel if it is made up of steel it has 0.7 to 0.8% of carbon and 0.5 to 0.8% percent of percent of manganese types of shares there are four types of shares that is slip share slip no share shin share and bar point share slip share this slip share is a one piece share so uh, there is no uh, other element fixed to the slip share this is a one piece one piece share which is common type of share this is mostly used by farmers slip share is mostly used by farmers slip no share slip share is only one piece but in slip no share there will there will be an adjustable thing so there will be an uh, detachable piece so this share point this is share point this share point can be replaced so if it is uh, worn out then this share point can be replaced on this share so in slip no share there will be a detachable piece 
shin shear so shin shear is same like slip shear but there will be a extension which is called as shin this is shin bar point shear so in bar point shear the cutting point is bar so at the cutting point bar is attached next types of mold boards there are four types of mold boards uh, which lifts the soil and inverts the soil general purpose stubble type solder breaker type and slab type first one is general purpose type so uh, this general purpose has median curvature which lies between this stubble and sod breaker type and this the slope is very gradual for this general purpose mold board next one is stubble type in stubble type uh, it will be short this stubble type mold board is short but it was broader mold board and it has some abrupt curvature and this stubble type mold boards are uh, used in stubble soils stubble soils is nothing but uh, if the all uh, the plan the previous crop plants are left in that same field so in like that uh, uh, fields are called as stubble soils so in that soils this stubble mold board is very suitable and it is not suitable for lands uh, that has full of grasses next one is solder breaker type in solder breaker type there will be gentle curvature and uh, it works well in tough soil of grasses and uh, um, it turns over thickly covered soil and this solder breaker type is very useful where complete inversion of soil is required by the farmer so this type is used in sod soils sod soils sod soils means the soils which are full of grasses and stubble so stubble mold board is not suitable for soils which have full of grasses they are uh, suitable for stubble soils slat type mold board slat type mold board means there will be slats these are slats and these are used for sticky soils plow accessories jointer this jointer is a small irregular piece uh, which will be in a uh, in a shape like uh, plow it is called as miniature plow jointer is called as miniature plow so it looks like the ordinary plow bottom Uh, while we are plowing this jointer is placed in front of our um, plow bottom so that this this jointer opens the soil and uh, next to the jointer the plow bottom goes into the soil and cuts the soil so by using this jointer the plowing uh, will be easy and will be done easily next one coulter Coulter is the device which is used to cut the furrow slice vertically from the land. So there are uh, two types of coulters that is rolling type disc coulter and sliding type knife coulter. In rolling type disc coulter there will be round steel disc which is used to cut the soil and in sliding type knife coulter there, uh, there is a stationary knife uh, which is fixed downward in the vertical position so that it uh, goes into the soil and cuts the soil. Next one is gauge wheel. Gauge wheel is an uh, attachment uh, to the plow. It's an auxiliary wheel which maintains the depth of plowing. Land wheel. Land wheel is the wheel of the plow which runs on the unplowed land. Front furrow wheel. The wheel uh, which moves on the fr on front of the plow, in front of the plow, then it is called as front furrow wheel. The wheel which moves rear of the 
plow, it, it is called as rear furrow wheel. Adjustments of the mold board plow. Vertical suction. So vertical suction is the uh, clearance clearance between the land side and the joining point of shear and the land side. Vertical suction is the distance. It is a clearance between this joining point of the shear and the land side and the horizontal surface. So by adjusting this vertical suction, we can improve the depth of plowing. If we if we increase this, if we increase this, then the depth of plowing will be increased. Horizontal suction. This horizontal suction is the maximum clearance between the land side and the horizontal plane where shear uh, the gunnel side of the shear and the heel of land side are met. So heel is nothing but the end part of the land side is called as heel. So this is the horizontal clearance. So by adjusting this horizontal suction, we can maintain the width of cut. We can improve the width of cut. It is also called as side clearance. Next one, throat clearance. Throat clearance is nothing but it is a perpendicular distance between the lower position of this shear. Here from the point of shear to the lower position of this beam. The perpendicular distance between this shear and the beam is called as throat clearance. Vertical clavis. Vertical clavis is nothing but a vertical plate uh, with uh, some holes which is used for maintaining the depth of plowing. Horizontal clavis. Horizontal clavis make the lateral adjustment of the plow. Plow size. Plow size is made by, perpend uh, by the perpendicular distance from the wing of shear to the line which is joining the shear and heel of land side. It defines the plow size. So some terminology. First one is center of power. Center of power is nothing but from where we are getting the power. So there will be three point linkage. This three point linkage is attached to the tractor. So from the tractor we will get the power. So this point, the point where, where from where we are getting the power is called as center of power. It is a true point of hitch of a tractor. Center of resistance. Center of resistance is nothing but where uh, it is the point of the implement where all the horizontal and vertical forces act. And uh, mostly it will be at the 3, uh, three by 4th size of uh, 3 by 4th place of that plow. Line of pull. So line of pull it is an imaginary straight line passing from the center of resistance uh, to the center of pull. Next one pull. Pull is the total force which is required to pull and implement. The total force is called as pull. Draft. Draft is nothing but it is an horizontal component of pull which is parallel to the line of motion. It is termed as D equals to P cos theta. P is the power and theta is the angle. So uh, formula of power is draft into speed. Side draft. Side draft is the horizontal component of the pull which is perpendicular to the direction of motion. Draft is parallel to the direction of motion and side, side draft is perpendicular to the direction of motion. Unit draft. Unit draft is nothing but draft per unit cross-sectional area. Theoretical field capacity. Theoretical field capacity is nothing but uh, if we take the implement is covered 100% of time and uh, with rated speed and also it covered 100% of its rated width then it is called as theoretical field capacity 
but uh, in practical it will not be done so 100% width cannot be covered and uh, we cannot uh, utilize 100% of the time so if we think 100% of time is covered and 100% width is covered by the implement with the desired speed then it is called as theoretical field capacity and for this uh, for calculating the TFC width into speed by 10,000 effective field capacity effective field capacity is the actual area covered by the implement so theoretical field, field capacity is not the actual area covered just we are imagining imagining that 100% um, width is covered and 100% time is utilized but in effective field capacity it is the real area covered by the implement in a particular time with a implement field efficiency field efficiency is nothing but it is the ratio of uh, effective field capacity to the theoretical field capacity next animal drawn mb plow so same uh, for animal drawn mb plow also there will be share which goes into the soil and cut the soil mold board which lifts and turns the soil lancer which makes a furrow slice frog which uh, which is used to uh, connect other components beam here there will be beam uh, in a tractor drawn implement there will be three point hitch whereas in animal drawn implement there will be beam in tractor drawn implement this three point hitch system is attached to the tractor and in this uh, animal drawn beam is placed on the animals standard so standard is uh, standard is the part which connects the soil cutting unit of the implement to the beam soil cutting implement is nothing but the plow bottom that means shear and uh, mold board gauge wheel gauge wheel is nothing but uh, which is used for adjusting the depth of the plowing and depending upon the size plows are uh, classified as light medium and heavy if you if the width of cut is about 100 to 150 mm then it is light plow if width is 150 to 200 mm it is medium plow and if the width is uh, greater than 200 mm then it is heavy plow next types of animal drawn mb plow fixed type or one way plow reversible type or two way plow in fixed type or one way plow the soil is thrown to only one side it is called as one way plow only uh, the soil is thrown to only if we want to throw the soil to one uh, right side only soil is thrown to that right side only in this one way plow whereas in reversible or two way plow if we want to throw the uh, soil to right side we can throw to the right side and if we want to throw the soil to the left side we can throw it to the left side there are two sets <coughs> there are two sets in this reversible type so one set uh, is uh, is used to throw the soil to the right side and another set to the left side in this reversible plow the disadvantage of this uh, plow is it is heavier and expensive than the one way plow and another plow that is turn rest plow so turn rest plow this is a turn waste plow so uh, we can rotate this turn waste plow at uh, approximately to 180 degrees for changing the direction of throwing the furrow, furrow slice so by rotating this turn waste plow we can adjust the direction of throw next plow is disc plow so disc plow cuts, turns and breaks the soil. There are different types of disc plows. Standard disc plow, vertical disc plow. Standard disc plow. So in standard disc plow, for the frame, here for this frame, axles are fitted. And for these axles, discs are fitted in standard disc plow. There will be separate axle for every disc and this is the gauge wheel 
uh, which are just are just the depth of plowing. So in disc plow, the cutting element is disc. In indigenous plow, there will be a shear, and uh, in NB plow, there will be shear, mold board, and also land side. Uh, and disc plow, there will be discs. And uh, the size of this disc varies from 60 to 90 centimeter diameter. And it is made up of heat treated steel. And the thickness of this uh, disc varies from 5 mm to 10 mm. And the concavity. Concavity is nothing but. So if this is the disc. This is the disc. The distance from this horizontal surface to the. This concave surface. So this distance is called as concavity. So the uh, the concavity is eight centimeters for sixty centimeter diameter disc and sixteen centimeters for ninety five centimeter diameter disc. Next one is vertical disc plow. So in standard disc plow, there will be separate axles. There will be separate axles for the discs, but in vertical disc plow, there will be a axle. Only there will be one shaft to which all the discs are attached. So, uh, for for plow uh, for harrow also, there will be a similar uh, arrangement. There will be for uh, disc harrow there will be similar arrangement. So that this vertical disc plow is also called as harrow plow or one way disc plow. And uh, the diameter of this vertical disc plow varies between 50 to 65 centimeters and the spacing between two discs are 20 to 25 centimeters and the disc angle is and the disc angle maintained is 40 to 45 degrees for this vertical disc plow. Advantages and disadvantages of the disc plow. So uh, this disc plow can be used for hard soils and we can use for sticky soils also uh, by using this disc plow we can do deep plowing we can use this disc plows in stony and stumpy, stumpy, stumpy soils also and we can use this for loose soils also disadvantages of this disc plow so comparing to the moldboard plow it cannot cover the trash and weeds effectively and Comparing to this MB plow, it leaves the soil in a clawed condition and it is heavier than the MB plow. This uh, MB, the main thing is MB plow depends upon the suction. So horizontal suction, vertical suction. So this uh, MB plow depends upon the suction. So by adjusting the suctions, we can increase or decrease the depth of plowing and width of plowing. Whereas in disc plow, we can do this. That means we can adjust the depth of plowing by adding the weight to this disc plow. This is the main thing, main difference between this MB plow and the disc plow. And the most important thing is disc angle. So disc angle is nothing but it is the angle at which the at which the plane of the cutting edge of the disc is inclined to the direction of travel so this is the direction of travel of the disc and the disc is in some uh, disc is with some inclination so this inclination to this direction of travel this angle is called as disc angle uh, this disc angle varies between 42 to 45 degrees and next one is tilt angle so tilt angle is the angle between the plane of this cutting edge of the disc and the vertical plane this angle is called as tilt angle and it is between 15 to 25 degrees and the penetration of the 
disc can be increased by increasing the disc angle by increasing the disc angle we can increase the penetration and by decreasing the tilt angle we can increase the penetration and by adding the weight we can increase the penetration of the disc plow next subsoiler and chisel plow so if the soil is very hard so to open up that hard pans we use this chisel plows or subsoilers uh, for subsoilers um, it can plow up to 40 centimeters or more than 100 centimeters subsoilers can plow up to more than 100 centimeters also terminology in plowing furrow so while we are plowing the trench this is the whole land so while we are plowing there will be a trench and a ridge and there will be a trench and there is a ridge so this trench formed while while we are plowing is called as furrow furrow slice furrow slice is nothing but it is the mass of soil which is cut and lifted and thrown to other side so the soil mass which is lifted and thrown to the other side is called as furrow slice this is furrow slice furrow wall furrow, uh, furrow wall is nothing but it is an undisturbed, uh, undisturbed soil surface the undisturbed so here there will be furrow and here there will be ridge so this side one this one undisturbed soil this side one is, is called as furrow wall undisturbed soil is called as furrow wall crown this crown is the top portion of the turned furrow slice here this top, top part is called as crown back furrow if soil is thrown from one side to the other side here one ridge was formed so on the ridge another ridge is formed this raised ridge is called as back furrow on the furrow slice if there is another furrow slice is formed and this thing is called as back furrow dead furrow dead furrow means two furrows at same place is called as dead furrow that means it is an open trench between two adjacent strips of land in back furrow two ridges are formed like this on the furrow slice another furrow slice is formed that is back furrow if two furrows is adjacent then it is called as dead furrow headland headland is the land which is left while uh, while we are starting the plowing so in this whole land we will leave this land we will leave this land and we will start plowing this land is called as head land so it is of 6 meters per uh, two or three bottom plow if one bottom is increased we have to increase the headland uh, headland to 1 meter that means if we use uh, four bottoms then seven meters headland is leveled up to seven meters so mostly six meters for three bottom or two bottom plow methods of plowing gathering gathering is nothing but if we do plowing in already plowed land then it is called as gathering casting so if we do uh, plowing in unplowed land then it is called as casting next one is continuous plowing method in continuous plowing method uh, if we take this area 3 by 4th area is divided and this area will be tilled so after completing this area we will come to the other area and we will do 
tillage in this area. So this is called as continuous ploughing method. Next one is round and round ploughing. This round and round ploughing is of two types. Starting at the center and starting at the outer end. In starting at the center, we will start the ploughing at the center. We will start ploughing at the center and we will plough hold the land like this. In starting at outer end, we will start the ploughing at outer end and we will come to the center. Harrows. Harrows are the secondary tillage implements which, which provides good soil tilth. So by using this harrows, we can cut, cut the soil to a shallow depth only and it smoothens and pulverizes the soil. Primary tillage is done to done for uh, primary tillage is is done for more depth but uh, but in secondary tillage only shallow depth is tilled there are different types of harrows disc harrow spring tooth harrow spike tooth harrow blade harrow guntaka triangular harrow bodela binda zigzag harrow these are different types of harrows in this mostly we will use disc harrow type. So disc harrows are of two types, tractor drawn or animal drawn and tractor drawn is of single action and double action and in this uh, single action is nothing but there will be only two gangs placed it, uh, which are placed end to end and the soil will be thrown into the opposite sides. So if uh, one gang throws soil to this side then another gang throw the soil to the another side. Uh, double action disc harrow. In double action disc harrow, there will be two or more gangs. And uh, the front and back gangs, gangs throw the soil in the opposite directions. It is of two types, tandem disc harrow and offset. In tandem disc harrow, there will be four gangs. In this, these two gangs to the same side and another two gangs to the opposite side. Offset disc harrow. The, uh, in this, there will be two gangs. So this offset disc harrow is very useful for orchards and gardens. So in this, one gang throws the soil to the to one side and another gang to the other side. And in this, uh, the line of pull is not in the middle of this harrow, so that it is called as offset disc harrow. Components of the disc harrow, disc. So it is uh, circular in shape and uh, it is made up of heat treated steel. And this disc is made up, uh, made up of heat treated steel and it is of 35 to 70 centimeter diameter and this uh, is of two types plain disc and cutaway disc plain disc means uh, it will be plain there, uh, there will not be any serrations on the circumference but in cutaway disc there will be serrations at, at its end uh, and uh, most of the harrows are fitted with this plain discs only and cutaway discs have serrated edges and they cut uh, grasses and other stacks and also other vegetative matter and cutaway discs are not very effective for pulverization of soil and uh, but but this cutaway discs are mostly useful for most uh, it is very useful for puddling the field uh, especially for paddy gang so gang is nothing but assembly of this concave disc, disc is called as gang gang axle gang axle, axle is nothing but it is a shaft on which the set of the discs are mounted 
and um, for uh, light duty arrows the spacing between discs is 15 to 23 centimeters and for heavy duty arrows it is, the spacing between, uh, is 25 to 30 centimeters gang angle gang angle is nothing but the angle between the axis of the gang and the line which is perpendicular to the direction of travel is called as gang angle and next gang control lever so a lever uh, which operates this angling mechanism is called as gang control lever spool or spacer this spool or uh, spacer is nothing but a, it is an uh, a uh, tube tube like structure which is used to maintain the disc disc at a at some position so if this is the axle so discs are mounted like this so to fix this discs at some position we will use this spacer or spool so by by using the spacer or spool we can fix the discs in certain position so it will not be moved the next one is um, and this uh, spool or the spacer is made up of cast iron transport wheels this transport uh, wheels are used to move that particular implement scrapper so scrapper is nothing but it is a uh, thing which prevents the disc from clogging so if this is the disc the scrapper is placed on the disc like this with some clearance so when the um, soil is stick to this disc while it is rotating this scrapper removes that soil from this disc surface weight box weight box is uh, used for attaching the additional weight to that implement animal drawn disc plug so same as disc plug uh, this animal drawn disc harrow also has same parts but in the place of three point linkage there will be beam which is placed on the animal so in animal drawn disc uh, harrow there will be six or eight dis discs in two gangs three three or four four discs in one gang and uh, the frame is made up of mild steel and it is of 80 to 100 kg components disc gang frame beam gang ang gang axle mechanism scrapper spacer clevis axle and middle tine so there will be middle tine in between this uh, um, two gangs which covers the area which is in the middle of those two gangs bearings other harrows that is first one sp uh, spike tooth harrow so in spike tooth harrow there will be spikes the spikes are the cutting elements for this spike tooth harrow there are two types of spike tooth harrows that is rigid type and flexible type this rigid type is mostly used for animal drawn and uh, flexible type is used for tractor drawn harrows. So in rigid type, the pegs are fixed. Pegs means the spikes. The spikes are fixed. They are not movable. But in flexible type, we can move these pegs. And these pegs are mostly diamond uh, in diamond cross section. And the principal use of this uh, uh, spike tooth harrow is it uh, smoothens and levels the soil easily the components of this spec to this teeth tooth bars clamps guard braces levers and hooks so the teeth may be square or triangular or circular in shape and these tooth bars and these tooth bars are made up of wood or steel And the clamps are used uh, and the clamps are used for fastening this teeth to the tooth bars spring tooth harrow in spring tooth harrow there will be 
springs and uh, this spring tooth harrow is mostly uh, used in hard and stony soils there will be springs so if uh, any obstacle comes the spring lifts the time so that the operation is done easily without worn out uh, with uh, without the damage of that spring uh, without the damage of the times it is uh, best suitable for hard and stony soils for this spring tooth harrow there will be springs uh, which have loops of elliptical elliptical shapes cultivators there are different types of cultivators so, uh, disc cultivator rotary cultivator and tine in disc cultivator the cutting element is disc in rotary cultivator there will be blades which are rotated and in tine cultivator there will be tines so cultivators are uh, the implements which are used for intercultivation again it is classified into tractor drawn and animal drawn and tractor drawn may be trail type or mounted type and it it is of major it is of two types cultivator with spring loaded tines and cultivator with rigid tines so cultivator with spring loaded tines so in this tines are made up of high carbon steel and uh, it is mostly used uh, in the soils which has stones and stumps so because it is spring loaded so that uh, there will uh, there will not be any damage to that tines and mostly this uh, cultivators may be fitted with 7 9 11 or 13 tines cultivator with rigid tines so uh, in in this cultivator the tines are fixed to the frame this is cultivator with rigid tines this tines are here the tines are fixed to the frame this part is called as shovel cultivators with spring loaded tines here there are springs so that when obstacle comes it lifts this implement so that it can escape from the damaging rotavator so uh, without doing primary tillage and secondary tillage separately we use rotavator so by using this rotavator primary and secondary tillage can be done easily so this it can do two things primary tillage and secondary tillage that means it can pulverize the soil easily it, it makes the it makes good seed bed so for this ro uh, rotavator there will be a axle on which this rotas are attached for this rotas there will be blades for E, um, for each rotor there will be six blades so uh, three three face to one direction and the other two will be faced to the another direction simultaneously so uh, so by the rotating rotating action of this rotors the soil is tilled and this rotavator is connected to the tractor by the PTO shaft. Puddler. So, uh, puddler is an implement which is used for churning the soil in standing water. It is used for rice fields, paddy fields. Okay. Um, in this, this puddler will breaks the clots and also churns the soil. It kills the weeds and also it uh, mixes with, with the soils uh, this uh, puddling operation is done in the standing water of 5 to 10 centimeter depth and mostly used puddler uh, is of in the range of 30 to 40 kg so this is one type of puddler uh, there are different types of puddlers that are 
used in this paddy fields cage wheels cage wheels also used for puddling so instead of the tractor pneumatic wheels we'll place this cage wheels and we will do puddling bun farmer so bun farmer is used for making buns so these are farming boards so here by using this farming boards ridges and furrows are formed so these uh, buns are required for holding the water and uh, growing that crop so that we will make this ridges and furrows and there will be another thing that is called ridger which is also called as furrower or ridging plow or, or double mold board plow so uh, in the same like bun former it also makes buns and furrows that means furrows and ridges uh, mo the mostly this uh, ridger will be uh, v shaped or wedge shaped share green manure trampler it is an implement which is used for trampling or and uh, the pressing the green manure crop in the fields so it is of uh, two types slat type or disc type slat type is nothing but uh, in slat type there will be uh, long radial slats so there will be slats like this like bars whereas in disc type there will be discs and uh, this is used for trampling the and pressing the green manure in the field itself mostly the weight of this green manure trampler lies between 30 kg to 40 kg paddy weeder paddy weeder, weeder uh, is a very important equipment which is used in uh, inter, uh, which is used for inter cultivation for paddy cultivation so it is used for uprooting the weeds and burying them in the soil uh, there is also some hose like hand hose, spade, kurpa or wheel hose. So by using this hose also we can use the, we can do the intercultural operations in different fields. Next topic is seeding methods. There are different seeding methods. First one is broadcasting. Broadcasting is nothing but random scattering of seeds in the field like this. So random scattering of this seeds is called as broadcasting. Uh, we can also use the mechanical broadcasters. Uh, there will be a, a disc like this. So we will place the, uh, there will be a hopper. So from that hopper, seeds are see, uh, from this hopper, seeds are placed on this disc. And this disc will be rotated with some amount of speed. So that by the rotating action of this uh, uh, disc, the seeds are sown in that, broadcasted in that field. Next one is dibbling. So dibbling is nothing but uh, uh, with the help of an implement which is called as dibbler, will make holes in the soil. So that in that holes, uh, we'll place the seed and we'll close it hole drilling drilling is the continuous dropping of the seeds in the furrow lines and closing the soil seed drills and seed come fertilizers are fertilizer drill are used for drilling next seed dropping behind the plow so it is a very common method uh, used in the villages it is used for sowing the maize gram peas wheat and barley in this a man drops the seed behind the plow so the um, implement which is used for uh, this was called as malo bansa malo bansa so uh, this malo bansa consists of a bamboo tube with a funnel shaped mouth so from that uh, funnel shaped mouth seeds are so, um, sent into that bamboo tube so that it sows the soil uh, so sows the seed into the soil Next one is transplanting. In transplanting, the already prepared seedlings are placed in the soil. 
mostly it is done for paddy vegetables and flowers but it is a very time consuming operation so that the equipment which is used for uh, transplanting is called as transplanter we will use the transplanter for transplanting next one is hill dropping so hill dropping is a method in which seeds are dropped at fixed spacing uh, not in a continuous stream with a fixed spacing the uh, seeds are sown we will maintain plant to plant spacing in this hill dropping next one is chakra planting in chakra planting uh, plant to plant and row to row spacing is maintained the machine which is used for this chakra planting is called as chakra planter and in this method seeds are planted very precisely along the straight furrows this is the seed cum fertilizer drill so seed drills or seed cum fertilizer drills are used for sowing the seeds in seed cum fertilizer drill uh, seeds and also fertilizer can be applied to the field simultaneously and the functions of seed seed drill is to carry the seeds and to open the furrow slice and to meter the seeds and place the seed in the furrow and close the furrow components of seed drill frame seed box seed metering mechanism furrow openers and covering device and transport wheels so frame so this frame is usually made of angle iron and uh, um, it it withstands all the loads when it is in working condition next to seed box seed box is made up of mild steel or galvanized iron so in this uh, we will place the seeds or there will be another uh, thing that is called as fertilizer box there we will place the fertilizer and seed metering mechanism the seed metering mechanism meters the seeds and uh, send, sends the seed to the uh, seed tube through that it will sow into the soil furrow openers so furrow opener opens the furrow and after placing the um, seed into the soil the covering device will be will cover the soil on the on that furrow on that seeds transport wheels so by this movement of the transport wheels this whole operation will be done seed metering mechanisms there are different types of seed metering mechanisms so this mechanism of the seed drill uh, delivers the seeds or fertilizers from the hopper to the uh, furrow in the selected rate fluted type this is a fluted uh, type mechanism in this there will be feed roller and the uh, feed cutout device so by using this feed roller only the seeds are placed into the soils by movement of this feed roller internal double run so this comparing to the internal double run the fluted field mechanism only more positive that means it do good work uh, comparing to the internal double run so in this internal double run there will be fine and coarse ribbed flanges so by using these flanges the sides are thrown the seeds are uh, thrown into the seed tube so uh, in this internal double run there will be flanges in that there will be uh, uh, two faced wheel on one face there will be larger opening and in another side there will be small openings this larger face the, the larger openings um, fit the for uh, larger seeds and uh, other face for smaller seeds next one is cup feed in cup feed mechanisms there will be uh, cups on the periphery of the rotating discs disc and uh, there will be a hopper for this cup feed mechanism uh, this uh, seed hopper is divided into two parts that is upper upper one part it is called as grain box and uh, down uh, down there will be another part that is called as feed box and uh, there are shuttles which are uh, uh, used to connect these boxes and there will be a spindle uh, which is 
used which is uh, used for rotating this disc so that the spindle in this frame is attached to a thing that is called as feed barrel and uh, this uh, cup feed mechanism is uh, uh, most common in british seed drills self feed mechanism so self feed mechanism has uh, cells on the um, circular wheel brush feed mechanism in brush feed mechanism uh, there will be brush which regulates the flow of the seed into the seed tube uh, the bullock drawn planters are used this use this uh, brush feed mechanism only auger feed mechanism auger feed mechanism is most common fertilizer drill in our country there will be a auger by the action of the auger uh, seeds are thrown into the seed tube picker wheel mechanism in picker wheel mechanism there will be radially projected arms on a vertical plate so by the help of that arms wheels uh, the seeds are picked up and thrown into the seed tube star wheel mechanism this mechanism has a toothed wheel rotating in the horizontal plane and conveying the fertilizer into the seed tube types of furrow openers shovel type shoe type and disc type shovel type this shovel type is widely used in in uh, seed drills and it is of three types reversible shovel single point shovel spare point shovel so depending upon its construction it is of three types and this uh, shovel type openers are best suited for stony or root infested soils stony or root infested soils this is the most important thing root infested fields and um, uh, there will be springs on the tines so that um, if any obstruction comes then it can escape from that damage and this shovel type is the very common implement uh, very common type which is used in the seed drill next one is shoe type this shoe type is used for trashy soils and it is especially suited for black cotton soil and this uh, shoe type is made up of carbon steel uh, which is ha having minimum carbon content of 0.5% and with a minimum thickness of 4 mm next one is disc type in disc type it is of uh, uh, two types single disc and double disc in single disc there will be single disc only so uh, this single disc type uh, shovel is uh, used for is very suitable for trash mulches or debris uh, plant debris soils so where, where there is more uh, mulching material that means where there is more vegetation there this disc soils are this single disc is very suitable and this disc is made up of hardened steel and it is also used in sticky soils double disc type this double disc type is mostly used in trashy lands so this furrow opener consists of a tine shovel seed tube and boot so uh, shovel is made up of carbon steel uh, in which the carbon content is 0.5 percent and minimum thickness of 4 mm seed tube seed tube is not there will be so at the end there will be time like this for this time the shovel is fixed shovel is a cutting element which is going into the soil for this seed tube is fixed so from the hopper seed will be thrown into this seed tube and from this seed tube the uh, seed is thrown into the furrow so this time opens the furrow and the seed tube is attached here there will be another part which is called as boot the end part of the seed tube uh, which delivers the seed into the furrow is called as boot so this boot delivers the seed into the soil so this is 
uh, and uh, the minimum diameter of this C tube or fertilizer tube is 25 mm and uh, uh, for sewing for sewing purpose we will use polythene or polyethylene or rubber tubes next calibration of seed drill so calibration of seed drill is nothing but the procedure of testing the seed drill for correct seed rate it is called as calibration of seed drill test for seed uniformity so it can be tested in two ways sticky belt method sand bed method in sticky belt method uh, the drill is placed on, uh, placed on a stand and uh, a belt of 10 meters is placed in front of that drill and the drill will be operated so uh, for that belt will we will apply the grease so that when we operate the drill the uh, seeds which are coming from that drill will be sticked on that belt so that after doing that we will see uh, the spacing between the two seeds and uh, uh, we can know is is that uh, drill is working properly or not it is uh, is it uh, placing the seed or not and uh, at correct spacing is it is it placing or not we'll test the seed drill and we should do this method at least for 10 times for proper seed rate next sand bed method in sand sand bed method we will prepare an artificial bed of 25 centimeters depth from uh, fine sand and length of 5 meters and width which is equal to the nominal width of the drill so uh, so after preparing that bed uh, we will move that drill on that bed so that we can know uh, how, uh, at how much spacing the drill is sowing the seeds and is it uh, sowing the seeds properly or not we can observe from that plant see here mm. drill that means seed drill transplanter planter so drill is nothing but for sowing the seeds transplanter is used for sowing seedlings for placing the seedlings in the soil planter planter is used for sowing large size seeds so seed drill planter is same uh, they they sow the seeds but planter is used for sowing the large seeds like potato so planter so, uh, functions of uh, planter is to open the furrow to meter the seed to deposit the seed in the furrow and to cover the seed and compact the soil. Components of the planter. Hopper, feed meeting device. This feed meeting device is of three types. Edge drop, flat drop and hill drop. Knockout arrangement. Cut off mechanism. Furrow opener. So a hopper. This hopper holds the seeds. Feed meeting mechanism. Meters the seed and delivers the seed into the seed tube. These are two types, edge drop, hill drop, flat drop. In edge drop, uh, the seeds are carried at, at the edge of the plate. And in flat drop, it carry uh, the seeds are carried on the flat in the cell of the plate. So here, in edge drop, at the edge, like this, at the edge, at this edge, seeds are carried out whereas in flat drop on the surface on the surface of the plate the seeds are carried out whereas in hill drop same at the edge of the disc the seeds are carried out but the difference is that hill drop uh, can carry 
two or more seeds at a time. But in edge drop and flat, flat drop, there will be only one seed in one seed in one cell. But in hill drop, uh, two seeds or more than two two seeds can be carried out. And there will be a knockout arrangement, uh, which knocks out knocks out the seeds from the mechanism. That means um, if it is a play, uh, flat edge drop mechanism, there will be knockout arrangements. So if there is a seed fixed in this cell, particular cell, then then this knockout arrangement knocks out the pushes out this seed, pushes out the seed from this mechanism. Cut-off mechanism. If more than one seed is carried in the cell, then uh, this cut-off mechanism brushes out the moves this excess seeds from that particular mechanism. Furrow opener. Furrow opener opens the furrow, and by the help of the seed tube, the seed is thrown into the soil. Potato planter. Potato planter is of two types: automatic. Se semi automatic uh, this automatic type potato planter uh, can be sown two to four rows and the capacity of this planter is 6000 to 14000 potatoes per hour Se semi automatic potato planter it also so two to four rows at a time and uh, the capacity of this semi automatic potato planter is 0.15 to 0.25 hectare per hour zero till drill so zero till drill nothing but no tillage is done so by using this zero till drill we can sow the uh, beet in freshly harvested rice fields so the, this zero till drill is used for sowing wheat in the freshly harvested rice fields uh, this machine is drawn by 30 to 35 hp tractor and it is a nine row drill the capacity of the zero till drill is 0 0.35 to 0 0.5 hectare per hour and uh, comparing to the normal method by using this zero till drill the the crop can be uh, grown 15 to 20 days before only and the uh, yield yield is increased up to 15 to 25 percent harvesting so harvesting is nothing but cutting the crop after it was grown so uh, there are rotary cutters or flail shredders so which are called as impact cutters these two are impact cutters so cutting action is done by impact so that it is called as impact cutter it is of two types rotary and flail shredders in rotary cutters there are knives which are rotating so there will be a rotor to which knives are mounted so by the rotating action of this uh, rotor the cutting action flail shredders flail shredders are knives which are rotating in vertical plane parallel to the direction of travel there will be knives like this so by the movement of the knives the cutting action is done this uh, and the rotary cutters with effective width of 1 to 2.1 meters has one rotor with two or four knives and the wider units has two to three rotors uh, which has cutting width of 0 0.7 to 2.1 meters the total cutting width may uh, of this rotor cutter may be 6.1 meters and the speed of the rotor will be 51 to 76 meters per second flail shredders this flail shredders have knives which are moving and the width of cutting may be 50 to 150 mm with rotor of 3 or rotor in 3 or 4 rows
Thank you.